Hi, I'm Mihul Harry with DevExpress. In the screencast, you're going to see how to use a DevExpress MVC extension and data bind it in a new ASP.NET MVC project. Now, it's not super simple, and there's a lot to cover. So I go kind of fast, but feel free to pause or rewind the screencast at any time. Now, let's get started. In this video, we're going to be adding the DevExpress MVC extension to a new ASP.NET MVC2 web project. The very first thing you want to do is you want to verify the project is set up to use DevExpress MVC extensions. So, what you can do is you can go to the video getting started with ASP.NET MVC extensions, or you can go to our mvc.devexpress.com demos website, scroll to the bottom, and you'll find a link to how to start using DevExpress MVC extensions, which will bring you to a knowledge base article that takes you step by step that tells you how to add the required assemblies and how to register certain items like the HTTP handler module as well as namespaces and the scripts. Now, just to let you know, I've started with a new web application and I've already added the required references as well as style sheets and scripts for the site master page. Now, because I'm going to be showing data from my database, I want to hook the grid view up to a link to SQL model. So the very first thing I want to do is I want to add a link to SQL model. Now, the only model there is currently is the one that's provided by the ASP.NET MVC2 web application template, which is the account model that lets you add users to your website. Now, I want to add a custom model. So I'll right click on models. I'll select add, add new item. Now, from the data category, I'll select link to SQL classes, and I'm going to be calling this ADV works, which is short for AdventureWorks, which is a database in my SQL Server. Now, once the link to SQL designer comes up, I'll click on Server Explorer, and I'm going to go to the SQL Express AdventureWorks, and I'm going to select the customer table. I'll drag and drop that onto the designer. Now, I'm going to be removing certain fields that I don't find useful. So I've selected some fields. I'll hit delete. Now I only want to show these fields on the grid view for now. So I'll select save. Now if we go back to the solution explorer and we take a look at the model and we'll take a look at the ADV works designer.cs file, I can see that a new ADV works data context is defined for us. Now we're going to be using this data context to retrieve data from the controller which is going to be used to pass to the view onto the grid view. But we'll get to that in just a minute. Now what we want to do is we've since we defined our link to SQL model, we want to add the view user control. Now the reason we want to do this is first let's take a look at the current site in action. All we've done so far is set it up with references to the DevExpress assemblies for MVC and we've added a link to SQL model which we're not really using to display any data onto yet. So this should look like a standard MVC2 web application. And as we can see, this is a standard MVC web application. And on the default view, we see a welcome to ASP.MVC message. Now, what I'm going to do is I want to display data right above this message that says to learn more about ASP.MVC. The first thing we want to do is we want to go to the views and under the home folder, we'll find the index page. Now, this is the default view. So here we can see that we're passing a message through the view data dictionary. Now, if we take a look at the controller, I'll go to controllers, home controller. We see that the view data is passing the welcome to ASP.MVC message. So the first thing I want to do is, is I want to change this message. And I'm going to change the message to have express MVC grid view. Next, I'm going to add a placeholder for the grid view. Now, because we removed that message, I can also go to the controller and remove this view data because I'm not going to be passing the view data message. Instead, we're going to be passing data. Now, let's just take a quick look at this in action. Now, as we defined, we've changed the header and we've added a placeholder where we're going to add our grid view extension. Now, if we go back to the index page, instead of just adding the code for the grid view extension, what we want to do instead is add a view user control, specifically an MVC to view user control. Now, what this allows us to do is to separate the grid view into its own user control that will be referenced from this index page. 
Now, this is necessary and helpful because the grid view uses a lot of callbacks for its functionality for sorting and paging. So, to add this, I'm going to right-click on the Views Home folder, and I'm going to select Add New Item. Now, I'll go to the Web MVC2 Templates, and I'm going to select MVC2 View User Control, and I'm going to call this Customer Partial because it's a partial page. Now here, we can define the grid view extension. Now, to make it easier for you, we've expanded the HTML helper method to add the DevExpress MVC extensions so that they are easier for you to declare. So I can simply say HTML.DevExpress.GridView. Now, I'm going to set up some default settings for the grid. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the settings.name property and because this is a data binding example, I'll call this GV data bind. Now, next thing is I'm going to set the callback route values. Now, I'll explain this a little bit more, but basically, this is what allows the grid view to talk back to the controller to get the data it needs. So, I'll define a new, new callback route value, and I'll specify the controller as the home controller. And I'll specify the action as customer partial. Now, we haven't defined this action yet. We're going to need to define it inside the home controller. But we'll define that in just a bit. Now, the final thing I want to do is I'm going to set the width property of the grid view to 100. Dot percentage set to 100. Now, I can close this. And I'm going to be calling the bind method and I'll say model. Now, we haven't passed this model in yet, but we were going to be from the controller, which is why we removed that view data message instead. And finally, I'll call the render method. Now, we have our grid view MVC extension defined, but to display it onto the index view page, we need to actually call it. So, the first thing we want to do is we want to remove our placeholder and instead call the HTML.RenderPartial method and reference the new view user control that we defined. Now, once again, we need to pass in a model. Now, we haven't passed this in yet, but this is going to be coming from the controller, so we'll see that in just a minute. Now, let's just take a look at this. Even though we're asking for a model and we haven't passed one in from the controller, we should still see an empty grid. So let's just take a quick look at this in action. Now, we can see that our index view is calling and rendering the partial view user control which contains the DevExpress MVC, MVC grid. Now the grid is empty because we haven't bound any data to it yet, so let's bind some data to it. Now let's just take a look. We've added the view user control, we've set up the grid view, now we want to add data logic to our controller. So I know that we're going to need some logic to get the data, so the first thing we want to do is we're going to want to go to the home controller. Now before we can pass data back to the view, what I need to do is actually go and get the data. And what I want to do is I want to get everything from the customers table that we have in our link to SQL model. So I'm going to start by calling a reference to the AdventureWorks data context. Now to do that, I need to add a reference to the actual data context. So I'll say using griddemo.models. And now we can reference our data context. And I'll create a new variable to reference it, and I'll call it works DC. Now, I'm going to create a new method for this data context that will create the context if it doesn't exist or return a value for it if it already exists. So I'll call it ADV works DB and it will return this data context. Now, the only thing I'm going to need inside of it is a get method and I'm only going to check if works DC is null and if it is, I will send a new data context back. Otherwise, we'll simply return the current instance. Now, to get the data, I'm going to make a getCustomers method. And it's going to return a iEnumerable type. Now, here I'm going to call a little bit of link here. I'm simply going to say return from customer in ADVWorksDB. And here we can call customers because we know from the ADV data context that customers exist in there. And I'm going to select customers.
customer. Now be sure to add the proper using references. Now for because I'm using iEnumerable, I need to add the using system collections reference. Now I'm going to add this specific data code inside of a region. And I'll simply call it data. Now because we have our get customers defined, we can simply pass this through the view which will be passed as our model over to the partial page. So if we take a look at this index view here, we can see that this render partial that accepts a model is going to be getting it from the controller, which will be this data that's passed over from the data context. Now, let's take a look at this in action. Now, our grid view is bound to the data. However, if we try to do anything like paging, what you might find is an error pops up. Now that's because we haven't defined that callback route and it's looking for a method that we haven't defined yet. So if we take a look at back to our customer partial page, we are seeing that the callback should be routed through a particular action in the home controller called customer partial. But if we take a look here, this doesn't actually exist yet. So let's define that. Now we're going to call this customer partial, which will be the new action that returns the action result and through it I'm going to return a partial view which we'll call customer partial which is calling the customer partial view user control and we'll pass it the get customers data. Now I want to make sure this method is public. Now let's take a look at this in action. Now if the initial data is data bound and if we've called the method properly we should get callbacks. Now we can see that paging is now supported as well as sorting and column moving. Be sure to check out our other online demos which you can find at mvc.devexpress.com and taking a look at the many other examples. And if you want to see how a particular demo was implemented just scroll down the page and take a look at the code within different tabs. Now these demos are also installed in your local system with your DevExpress installation. Now as you saw, the same way that I hooked up the GridView MVC extension to a link to SQL model can be done with the other DevExpress MVC extensions. Thanks for watching.